That report from Democracy Now!'s Amy Littlefield here in Warsaw, Poland. To talk more about the climate crisis in Africa, we're joined by two guests. Tosi Panupano is the former chair of the Africa Group here at the UN Climate Change Negotiations. He's from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Also with us is Mathika Mwenda, Secretary General of the Pan Africa Climate Justice Alliance, part of the walkout Thursday, but has come back inside the summit just to talk with us today. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Tosi Panupano, you're inside. What's being accomplished here? What do you think needs to happen, particularly? for the continent of Africa? Well, I believe that uh, we should start uh, to see some momentum because this COP cannot be seen in isolation. This COP is certainly linked to the COP next year in Lima and to the one in Paris in 2015, where we're supposed to agree on this new climate regime. And if some developing countries are to take more action, this action will be commensurate with the means put at the disposal. So we need to see a good signal when it comes to finance. And unfortunately, we are not seeing so. so. What do you mean by finance? Finance has to take place in, I believe, uh, three places. First of all, long-term finance. It is important that we see how we'll get to the $100 billion by 2020. We actually need some mid-term goal because we have no clarity in this post-fast start era where we are. Are we going to see a plateau from last year? Are we falling off the cliff or is there going to be some increase? First, we need to see some direction. Second, we need to see a capitalization of green climate funds. Right now, it is a nice vault. Unfortunately, it's an empty vault. So we need to see some political signals as regards the mobilization of resources to be put in the fund. What are the major obstacles that you see here? And if you see them as countries, name the countries. Uh, well, I'm not going to do any naming and shaming, but... Uh, I, I, I know you're a very good diplomat, <laughs> so maybe I'm going to ask, have to ask our other guests. Yes, no, what I'd like to say is that we know that people have committed according to the convention, which we have, we call it the rule of law. We know that you have three group of countries. Our next one is supposed to show leadership when it comes to mitigation. Our next two countries. What do you mean by mitigation for people Mitig who aren't familiar with the Mitigation is to reduce uh, the emissions of greenhouse gases, uh, which constitutes this problem of uh, climate. Uh, the annex two countries are countries which are developed and which are supposed to provide means which are financials, technology transfer, and uh, capacity building. And then you have non-annex one countries, which are developing countries. They have to undertake action also, but that action will be commensurate with whatever support they get. So unfortunately, we're not seeing any signal as regards the finance. We do see a positive signal is the adaptation fund, which was running out of resources given the very low prices of carbon, uh, has been, it seems, uh, replenished. It's going to be replenished because countries have made pledges which are close to $100 million. So as far as Africa is concerned, we are quite happy because the overriding priority of the African group is adaptation. We see a right signal, but not to go beyond the only adaptation uh, action to have African countries to undertake more actions as regards mitigations, as regards Red Plus, which is the reduction of emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, and to undertake NAMAS to strengthen the capacity, we need to see scaled up financing. Uh, Matika Mwenda, uh, you represent the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. Which nations are these, and what do you think needs to be accomplished here? You have very much an uh, outside perspective. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not a diplomat like uh, my friend uh, uh, Tosi. Uh, what I can say is that um, we are really agitated, and countries is, is actually good to mention them. We have uh, Japan, we have uh, uh, United States, we have Canada, we have Australia, Russia, countries which have the biggest obligation to make in terms of emission reductions and transition to the low carbon development pathways. But what we have seen here is that they are backtracking on their earlier commitments and we don't see a reason why we should continue with these negotiations when they are not honoring what they were first to do in the first place. Talk about the issue of equity. Who is most impacted by climate change? We in Africa are greatly impacted by climate change. 
You have shown the, the a video by Patrick Bond. The science is very clear about climate change. We have seen the, report, the most recent IPCC report, and to us, ICC is... The uh, IPCC, of IPCC. course, is a scientific panel yes, of a yes, thousand yeah. uh, scientists. Intergovernmental panel on climate change. That won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, what we have seen, actually, to us, is confirmation of what we are seeing. It is predicting that by this and 10, 20, 30, 2050. But we are seeing that it is coming earlier than what's predicted. And this is really scary, whereas the industrialized countries are taking not cue, not taking cue on this. We have seen rivers drying up, persistent droughts. We have seen floods, erratic rainfall, snows which appear and in our mountains and during my lifetime I've seen them disappearing. So these are things which are seen there. So this, the issue of climate change is actually not to be, uh, to be told by somebody. We are experiencing that and that's why we have come here even to offer testimony to the industrialized countries and the global community that it is indeed not a fiction, it is something which is happening. How did you come to Warsaw and who were the people that you came with? We came here first and foremost as Africans to join the rest of the global community in solidarity, to join the movement, to tell the global community that uh, the inaction which we have been seeing here is really unacceptable. And we have to work together. Of course, we, be, we, 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 we think, we believe that uh, it is that global collaboration which is going to defeat the impacts of climate change. We in the South, we in poor countries in Africa are doing a lot. Small group, women groups in Africa are doing a lot in small low carbon development efforts like uh, 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 agriculture, organic agriculture, uh, uh, cook stoves, and so forth and so forth. But where we are supposed to see action in industrialized countries, in the United States, in Australia, and those others, we are not seeing that action. Tosi Panu Panu, people in the United States who are listening or watching right now might say, we'd like to be able to give charity to other countries, but we're dealing with our own crises. Can you talk about that issue of those who see this as charity? It's certainly not uh, charity. I think it's uh, rather something along the lines of compensation because uh, runaway climate change is putting one billion Africans in harm's way. Today, those Africans have to go through adverse effects of a global phenomenon that they didn't create. It's actually creating not only drought, floods, it's creating conflict because people have to go further and further to get some water and other people are not just welcoming, welcoming them. So uh, Mr. Jones can drive two SUVs in the U.S. while a uh, poor African is fighting uh, to get some water. So it's about doing what's right and it has to be done in two ways. To reduce uh, the lifestyles, uh, the, the, the consumption of carbon in, in the north and to provide some resources so that we can deal with a climate change phenomenon which was imposed how does climate change affect the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo? Many ways, many ways. I mean, uh, land that, where that was very fertile is no longer fertile. Uh, in certain plateaux where you didn't have malaria, malaria now is there. Um, we do have uh, also problems where, as regards the irregularity of rainfalls. Uh, so it's create a, a diminution in uh, crop yields. So it, it, it does have a bearing on the very livelihoods of uh, 70 million people in the DRC. And once again, they didn't contribute to create this climate change phenomenon. Final words as this conference is wrapped up. Can Africa wait until 2015 or 2020 um, for the world to reach a climate deal? No, Africa, every year which is passing, Africa is being pushed closer. closer.